10 Steps to Becoming a Millionaire in Five Years. If you don't have this book, go grab it. If you don't have it, go get it on Amazon or my store. Actually, go to my store. I'll actually autograph and send one out to you. But I have a better deal later on, so just hang tight. Those of you who have it, though, I'm going to refer to it a lot because this is the gem of the enterprise on The Millionaire Maker. All right, so let's talk about it. 10 steps to becoming a millionaire in five years, right? I'm gonna put them in a little different order now that we're a few years past the book and when it was published. So number one, get a pen and paper. You gotta change your pattern. So in our money world, the way that we're taught, right? And a lot of you that have been listening and you've been on my channel for a while, this is a, I shouldn't say it's repetitive, it's in a different order that you've ever probably heard me speak. Cause there's seven families in the Millionaire Maker and there's seven patterns that happen to these folks. So for you to figure out your pattern, we took four of them. Go to integratedwealthsystems.com and take my financial personality quiz, see where you are. Better than that, read the Millionaire Maker books so you have all seven patterns and let's start looking there first. So you, first of all, I don't care who you are. There's some pattern about money that has to change. So, you know, we're taught to go to school, get good grades, go to college, get a job, get a 401k, blah, 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 blah. Now that's changing. The pandemic actually has changed that pattern, but I don't know that it's a great pattern. Staying on unemployment and not working is kind of an interesting strategy to try to be rich. I just think people have a lifestyle goal instead of a money goal and they're making an excuse. So here's what I'm gonna say to you, cause I have a huge lifestyle. Like I built assets, then I build a lifestyle. So there's my pattern. And I would encourage you to do the same because then you'll have sustainable wealth whenever you want. And we're gonna talk a lot about that. Wealth and income are different. So we have a lot to talk about. The pattern that is the biggest problem is we're taught how to make, spend, make, spend, make, spend. And then you get wrapped up in what I call a lifestyle cycle of worrying about how much you owe. And then the world followed suit, right? All media, all marketing outlets, and all the marketing in the world is suited to your really bad money behavior. Oh my God, I'm in debt. And then you have, you know, yappy wrong people over here saying, oh, but you shouldn't be in debt. Are you kidding? Debt's one of the greatest assets and tools you can use to create wealth, not lifestyle debt, good debt. We've got to break this pattern of make spend and being worried about, oh my gosh, how much do I owe somebody? Versus if you took half of the time that you worry about liabilities and your expenses, and you took just a portion of that time and you applied it towards making money instead of worrying about debt and how much you owe and what does it cost per month? Like that's not a psychology of the wealth. Wealthy people act, think, and, di and behave differently. So our pattern, right? So write this down, right? Your pattern is probably make spend and worry about debt. What I need you to do is make invest. And even if it's a small amount, that behavior of make, invest, make, invest is gonna change your life with money. And every dollar that you make, I don't care how young you are, you put some money away. Some people call that saving, I call it investing because I want it to be invested for compounding power. Savings is usually like a CD or a little, you know, few trinkets in the market for interest, you're not getting enough. That's why I wanna change your language as we're in this conversation and the topics will be different than uh, I talk about, usually they'll supplement my YouTube channel, but I want you making comments and talking and asking questions. So number one, change your pattern from a lifestyle cycle of make spend to a wealth cycle of make invest, right? You got that? From a lifestyle cycle of make spend and worry about debt to a, lot, a wealth cycle of make invest, right? That's assets to income to assets, income to assets, and then you compound the power. Number two, I go into page 17 of the Millionaire Maker book, chapter two, and you do a gap analysis. So a gap analysis is knowing where you are, which is your baseline and knowing where you want to be, which is what we call your financial freedom day. By the way, those are steps three and four. I'll talk about those in a moment. They're critical to know that gap. See, a lot of people say, well, Laurel, you have to motivate me or your channel motivates me. Or, you know, when I used to be live on stages, you know, so motivating. Well, no, motivation comes from inside and it's usually, I don't care what it is. It could be a health goal. Where you are, your baseline and where you want to be, there's a gap. Let's just talk about your business, maybe in marketing, right? Your baseline, what you want to be, there's a gap. So when your gap is irritating enough to you, unacceptable enough to you. You want to move from where you are to a new place. That's motivation. That's internally driven. So this is up to you. I'm just going to be your coach, your guide, your advocate, and be out here telling you, you know, how you can navigate. You're going to make the choices. I can't give advice. That's not what I do. I'm an educator, an advocate, facilitator of your 
knowledge with money. So figure out your gap. And in our gap analysis, I want you to notice that we only look at your income and your assets. Why? Because you're already in a pattern of worrying about your debt, your expenses, your liabilities. What do you owe other people? When you start getting wealthy, and I'm going to use the EIDL that was uh, hugely beneficial during the pandemic. And if you didn't go get it, I have clients that have got millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and are using it as a good debt strategy to really grow their company. So let's just say you got a million dollars. Oh my gosh, you owe the government a million dollars. So some of you who are so freaked out and wrongly educated about debt, you're thinking you owe a million. Well, you put a million towards a project that could make you 10 million, 20 million, that's good debt. And yeah, it's called leverage. So we have to untangle and unpack your thinking about debt, that it's a bad thing and that credit cards are bad. They're actually extremely useful, done right and responsibly. So your gap analysis is critical. I need to know your motivation. I have a huge team waiting. In fact, uh, Steve's with me here. He will put in our office number. You can call them at any time and say, I need a gap analysis and uh, we'll give you the download and you can actually write it out. Where are you? What do you want? And then I want you to take your first shot at it. Right? I give you enough information through my quiz and other content, my YouTube channel, that I want you to take your first shot. What do you think you should do first? Right? Because then it tells me how you're thinking. See, if I just download to you what my opinion is and how I would navigate if I had your situation, then, well, number one, I'm not going to give you advice, but then I don't know where your, your gap is in your thinking. Because you could say, well, I need to do this and I need to do this. And I can tell you the number one and two mistakes in becoming a millionaire is you've met me and you did nothing about it because you have this excuse called, I'm not ready. Like that is totally illegal, that you are always ready for whatever's right in front of you. And then the other one is I'll get to you once I fix things. Well, you don't know how to fix them. So then you're going to fix them in your same odd way. And now I got a bigger mess to deal with. So do not come to us and say, oh, I've been watching you for so many years. I just had somebody tell one of my uh, folks that work on our team that they've been, they knew me for 20 years. And the reason you're not a millionaire yet and you haven't begun, because you're either not ready or you're trying to fix something. I got to get divorced. I got to go through a bankruptcy. I've got to do my thing. No, you don't. You don't know how to do any of those things financially and responsibly. And I'm not being rude about it. I just have a lot of experience on how to navigate and take you through. I've been through a divorce, it was fascinating. Not a financial situation in your backstory of how you got where you are that had you arrive in this gap. I'm single parent, two kids. I had a minute where I had, you know, another parent. And, uh, but financially have done all of this as a single parent, traveled six continents with those kids and uh, wrote this book right with Kyle. He has a great story. I have a great story. The book is about our story, mine, which is single mom, two kids traveling the world, his 25 year Air Force uh, fighter pilot, phenomenal career and uh, how he did it. And we're very different somewhere in between pick a path and make a plan to become a millionaire and get your kids involved. So number one, you got to change your pattern from a lifestyle cycle to a wealth cycle. Number two, you got to get your gap analysis organized and know where it is. So once you know where it is going forward, you use bookkeepers and like Quicken or QuickBooks to actually orchestrate and keep your gap in front of you. What do you need? What it, like, where are you and what do you want? And you do the same sort of thing in the gap analysis. If you want to change your health, where are you? What do you want? You got to start getting motivated to move, move a direction that is not serving you to stay where you are. Number three, Let's talk about that baseline. So your baseline is getting organized. Now, there's a lot of traditional financial folks and I won't name their name out here, but you know who they are. They're going to say, get organized first. Are you kidding? Like, you know how boring it is to get organized? Oh, I'm going to go sort out my bank statements and my credit card statements and do all that. You're going to hire somebody to do that, right? So what we need, what an accountant needs to kind of organize where you are is where are you, right? today and what have you done like so this would be your bank statements your credit card statements one thing just while i'm talking about credit cards i do want you to unpack a little bit is your credit card statements so if you've been commingling because you've been a sole proprietor and didn't get organized properly you want to go through those statements and say in your best guess what do you think could have been a de business deduction and what's a personal expense? Now, once we get you truly living inside corporate life, because you have a company and your company makes money and you have a legal right for 81,000 pages of deductions, including your dog as a security dog or guns. And those are my two favorite new ones, but obviously your vehicle, your home office, your computer, your phone, all these things. So if you've been paying those bills personally, we've got to sort that out, uncollapse it and get it by paid by the right company. Otherwise you are commingling and you got big issues. So your baseline is about uncovering really what you've done. And some of you have just, 
even successful, successful folks. Like I'm thinking of a client who's, you know, a year and a half into a huge real estate project, unfortunately didn't have a bookkeeper and the records are there, but it is like, really, really messy would be an understatement. Getting your baseline organized is what's your income, personal and company. What are your expenses, personal and company? And some of you might have two or three companies. You might have your core operating company because you do something, you're a coach, you're an author, you're a real estate agent, you're a real estate broker, you're a real estate investor, you're a chiropractor, whatever you are. Like, so you have, and then like maybe you're a chiropractor and you have real estate. So you should have two companies. So again, I want you to really get organized around your income, personal and companies. And then you want to do your best to get organized around expenses, personal and business. Do your best guess. And then when we start really working with you, our teams can help you sort that out. You do the same in the asset column and the liability column. What do you own and what do you owe? So your baseline is get organized. You don't have to do it. In fact, I don't want you to do it because I want you out at our marketplace making money and you have the money to hire people to get you organized. Getting organized and doing paperwork is really boring. Like probably a couple percent of you, if we were in a live audience, I said, raise your hand if you love doing paperwork and I'd have people flee to you to hire you to organize them. But most of you don't like to do it. So I actually used to sell these t-shirts says do paperwork or be poor because you do have to stay organized in your gap analysis. So I help sequence you in a way that you know what to do first, second, third, and fourth. Some of you are successful business owners. Some of you, you have generational wealth already planned and you've got some like problems in that. There's a lot that we need to put a team around you to help you make the right decision. So my job is the facilitator and navigator of your experience. And I will, you know, introduce you to those different people. You can bring your team to this team, but they need to talk.